Hey everybody, welcome back to One Seed, One World. Today we're gonna try a little bit of some companion planting uh, and take a look at some updates in the garden as well. But I've been seeing different articles and reading some studies about uh, companion planting with your summer squash, zucchini and maybe some yellow straight neck squash. Uh, but you know, one problem that you have a lot of times with your zucchini and other types of squash are squash bugs and squash borer bugs. Um, but one thing that I've seen is that planting radishes around your squash can help deter squash bugs and squash borer bugs. Something about the smell of the radish deters them. And so I'm gonna try that up here. I have this test bed that's here around me. Uh, up here on the hill. This used to be three pine trees through here that had grown up into the maple that is just uh, behind the camera there. And uh, they were just kind of dilapidated and, and just overgrown uh, because they were grown up underneath of another tree. So we had them cut down and the stumps ground out and then I brought a bunch of this organic compost and topsoil mix up here to do a test garden. Uh, it doesn't get any morning sun. This area is all shady during the morning, but it does get some good afternoon sun through most of it. So, because my other beds aren't ready yet, I would, and my, and the beds I do have are pretty much full, I wanted to, if I don't fall down the hill, uh, go ahead and try my zucchini, some uh, yellow summer squash, uh, and maybe even some sugar baby watermelons up here in this bed. But then I am going to companion plant them with some radish. Uh, I have crimson giant and then some dill because dill uh, also attracts some uh, good pollinators and parasitic wasps that eat squash bug eggs. Now, last year around my squash, I only planted dill. I didn't notice a huge difference in protecting them. So I'm gonna see if Combining maybe the dill and the radish this year around the squash will help. So I'm going to plant a few beds here and or a few hills of squash and surround them with radish and dill and see what happens with it. Now generally when I plant my zucchini, I do them in hills of two or three seeds. But this time I think I'm going to try spreading them out a little bit more. and just do a single seed in there. We'll see what happens with that. Because I'm planting a lot more than normal. So I'll just space them out. Put one seed per hill and we'll go from there. So just above where I have my squash here, I'm gonna try just doing a quick row of some of this Crimson Giant Radish. Now what I have seen is that the, I think you're supposed to plant the radish a little bit earlier than the squash, but we're doing this all on the same day. And radish generally grows pretty quick. Normally within 30 to 45 days, I've been able to harvest radish Although this is gonna be more sacrificial. I don't think I will harvest much of it because I'm trying to keep it in here to be the deterrent against the squash bugs and we'll see how it works. It's got some seeds in there and I've got different hills of squash going down the hill here. Then just above, I'm gonna do a row of dill up there and we're going to see how this all sprouts up here in this area so we got this whole garden bed done um, i basically planted dill then radish then zucchini then more radish then yellow squash then more radish uh, and then i did some hills of sugar baby watermelons down along through here and then I also did an outside edge of dill around this way and another row of radish thrown in for good measure. 
So again, this is just a test bed. I've never grown vegetables or anything up here before. And we'll see how all this companion planting works out and how it comes up. This area down here also used to have an old dead spruce that we had cut down and the stump ground out, put dirt down here, made a second test bed. And in here you can see I've got some uh, white and red potatoes that are all sprouting down there. Uh, again, the area does not get a full day of sun, but it does probably get a good six hours. A lot of it is in the afternoon, so I thought that maybe I'd try some stuff down here. Um, so that half of the bed is potatoes. I have some random purple clay corn put in here that a lot of the clay corn had sprouted, but it looks like either rabbits or squirrels have been in here because right now I've got, uh, I mean, there's a few stalks coming up, but there's a lot of bare areas that originally had corn in them. And there's a couple I can see have been ripped out uh, probably by a squirrel digging or something because I've been having that issue. Right along here in front of me, I've got amaranth. I think it's opio, it's like that purplish red amaranth. And looks like almost all of it has sprouted. It's, I, I kind of planted it kind of thick because the seeds are really small. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of let it grow and see what it does. But I might, I'm thinking with some of these areas are so thick, I'm gonna need to thin them out a little bit to really get the full potential of the plant uh, if it does well. But test bed number two is sprouting well. This is about two weeks old and we'll see what kind of harvest we get out of this and see how much of the corn comes up with the squirrels and, and the rabbits around here. Uh, my idea with this purple clay corn was to uh, grow it and then ground it into flour. So we'll see if we can get any corn flour this year, although based on the amount that have not been hit by the critters, I don't know if we're gonna get very much. I did a uh, four by four section of peas that have sprouted really well. These are coming up really nicely. Uh, so, and so far, haven't had any critters in these beds. Knock on wooden bed that it stays that way. Uh, I have another small section back behind me as well with uh, a few other short rows of peas that's kind of mixed in with some dill that had sprouted on its own. Uh, and then the other half of this bed here, I've got a bunch of carrots that so far have all sprouted and just thinned them this week. So a couple weeks ago, I did my transplanting the tomatoes and cucumbers uh, little video. And this was the row of cucumbers that I put in. And really for the last couple weeks, they have looked like they were gonna die every single day. A lot of the leaves turn yellow. Um, they just went through some serious transplant shock and I didn't think any of them were gonna make it. Uh, so much so that I planted uh, another row of cucumbers on the other side of this trellis just in case none of these made it because they all looked so horrible. But apparently they just go through some really rough transplant shock and now they are growing like crazy. I mean, the last couple days, this one up here has doubled in size. Uh, I pinched off the worst of the yellow leaves on most of them, and now they're just really coming up really nice. Um, so if this continues and if these other ones that were direct sown sprout, I may end up with more cucumbers than I had planned on. So I was really concerned though about the way that they transplanted, but they have come back with a vengeance. All right, so that was just a quick short garden update and I wanted to go over a little bit about the companion planting. Uh, again, with the companion planting with the squash, most of the stuff I've read has been about icicle radishes being combined with the squash and even mixing in dill and marigolds. And like the combo of all three with the squash help prevent squash bugs, specifically the squash borer bug. So we'll see how that all works. I didn't have the marigolds to add, but um, got the, the radish in there and the dill kind of intermixed and surrounding 
the whole squash bed area along with those sugar belly uh, sugar baby melons so we'll see how all that turns out and then you know the other stuff that i've transplanted is coming along you know that sometimes transplant shock can be pretty severe with the the cucumbers it reminded me a lot of the loofahs except for the cucumbers even look worse because they were all turning like yellow and brown and stuff and now they've all popped back within a couple uh, what two or two and a half weeks or so when i've transplanted loofah they just kind of looked wilty for a month before they finally started to take off uh, but the other stuff that i've transplanted even some eggplant and tomatoes uh, and peppers that were really tiny just like a week ago they've already sprung back and are now starting to really pick up growth especially since we had some nice rains yesterday it rained all day long so when you're transplanting stuff that you've grown inside uh, if you've grown it in a greenhouse you might not need to harden off the plant as much because it's already had that direct sunlight uh, if you've got a fan or something in your greenhouse that will give it some wind so the plants are moving a little bit that's going to strengthen up their stems um, if you don't have a fan in a greenhouse then you might want to set them outside for two to three hours a day before you put them in the ground just to give them a little bit more of that wind effect to help them build up some strength but it's not absolutely necessary but a little bit of breeze always helps. Or you can just walk by and, br and kind of brush the top of your plants as well uh, before you're transplanting them out into the ground. Now, if you have started them inside where they've had no direct sunlight and only artificial light, then you're going to want to harden the plants off by bringing them outside each day in small bits and slowly building that up over like a two week period. Like first day, bring them out like 15, 20 minutes, take them back inside next day bring them out maybe a half hour and so on and so forth until you've built up you know so they're maybe outside a good three four hours and they're used to that direct sunlight otherwise plants can get sunburn uh, and they have a hard time recovering from that so you want to harden your plants off since mine were in the greenhouse they were already used to direct sunlight and i have a fan in there so they were getting some wind so i went directly from the greenhouse into the dirt and now these plants are, are starting to really pick up in pace. Um, so you really have to consider what your situation is and how you sprouted your plants and where you sprouted your plants so that they are having the best chance for survival and get the least amount of transplant shock uh, you know as, as, as much as possible. But some plants are going to suffer more from being transplanted than others. Tomatoes, peppers, eggplant are normally really hardy with transplanting. Cucumbers, squash, loofah especially. Uh, some of those other ones, um, they take longer to recover and sometimes they don't recover, but don't always give up. Like I just, you know, with, with these early fortune cucumbers, I was ready to just like, they're, they're done. They're not gonna make it. Four or five days later, hey, look at us. We're growing, we're fine now, we figured it out. Plants will often heal themselves. In many cases, there's a lot of times that you don't have to do a whole lot, you just have to give them time. Gardening is all about patience. So, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Hope you guys stop by again soon. Check out some more of our content, the building projects, the chickens, you know, whatever. Come subscribe to our channel. But whatever's going on in your neck of the woods, at your greenhouses, gardens, projects, chickens, whatever it is that you're doing, I hope it's going fantastic for you. And I hope that you are having a fantastic day. See you again soon. Namaste.